here we go. Jesus is risen. Say that with me. Jesus is risen. Get the t-shirt. Get the bumper sticker. Get the sign. Amen? Got it out there for you. New series, Jesus is risen. Today, got a special message on communion. We are having communion today. We do it the first Sunday of every month, but we do it several times this month. We have it today. We're going to have it on Good Friday. We'll also again have it on Easter Sunday night at the beach. Very important because communion is all about what we're celebrating right now. It's about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? So communion is our message this morning. I'm calling the message communion coming together. Say that with me. Communion coming together. Why coming together? Well, we're going to learn here in just a little bit. But first of all, let's go to this scripture. We're not going to preach this passage today. We're actually going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11 tells the church about communion, talks about how to have communion and why the need of communion, etc. But it actually goes back to the original Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. So if you'll follow along with me, when the hour was come, Jesus sat down with his 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I desired to eat this Passover with you before I, what? Suffer. Now, Jesus told the disciples on numerous occasions, they're in the Bible. He probably told them a whole lot more than we see in the scriptures. But he told them he is going to suffer. He is going to die. He is going to be buried. He even said, and the third day I'll do what? I'll rise again. But I know these guys didn't get it. His apostles at times, they weren't the brightest bulbs, and you and I probably wouldn't have got it either. If we would have lived with Jesus, if we'd have seen him walk on the water, if we'd have seen him bring Lazarus back from the dead, then we, like th th them, probably would have believed that he was going to kick Rome's rear end, that he was going to bring back, he was going to be the Messiah that was going to bring the kingdom now. But that's not the plan. The plan was for him to come and save sinners. Amen. That's why he came. And he said, I'm going to suffer. For I say unto you, I'm not anymore going to eat this meal until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And Jesus took the cup. We're going to do that this morning. He gave thanks. He said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I'll not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And then Jesus took what? He took bread and he gave thanks. And we do that same thing. We take the bread and we give thanks. And we take the cup and we give thanks. Why? Because this is what he did. This is laid out in Scripture. He said, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup. We'll do that in a little bit. After supper, saying this cup is the New Testament or the New Covenant in my blood which is shed for you. And so that's the last supper. And then we know what happened. They go out to the garden. Remember? He told the disciples, watch and what? Pray with me for how long? An hour. That you don't fall into what? Temptation. But they slept. And then Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, comes with a band of soldiers. And he said, arrest the one who I what? Kiss. And so that happens. And then Peter takes out a what? And cuts off what? Somebody's what? The guy's name was Malchus. It's in another part of Scripture. It's actually named the guy. What did Jesus have to do? Had to put his ear back on. He's got to go to the cross and do all this, and he's having to fix people's ears. Craziness. How many times did Peter deny him? But it says all the disciples forsook him and what? Led, the Bible says. So, communion, the Last Supper, we just saw it. Why do we have communion? What is communion about? There's a passage that talks about it. I'd like to, let's just talk about it today. Amen. Are y'all cool? Yes or no? Let's just learn today. What does the word communion mean? It almost tells what it means in the word itself. It means a state of intimacy, communion, coming together. What else does it mean? It means common interest, common, communion. Amen? What else, Raj? It means coming together. Say that with me. Communion means what? Coming together. One more time. Communion means what? Coming together. That's what we have here on Sunday morning. That's what we 
have here on Sunday morning. We have communion. We have coming together. What's our common interest here? Who's our common interest? Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, we try to set the stage for you here at this church. We love who? And we love who? We love Jesus and we love people. We love people because Jesus loves people. Amen. And because Jesus loves me, I must love you. Amen? That's who we are here. So communion, things in common. Now, we're going to break down this passage in a little bit. That's why I need you to don't go to sleep on me, all right? Because I'll sleep on you if you sleep on me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is the communion teaching passage in the Bible. The Apostle Paul was teaching the church at Corinth who was screwing things up. Their church was all messed up. And he was trying to set some stuff straight and teach them. But when he's teaching them about communion, look what he says. First of all, when you do what? Keep looking. Another scripture, Rods. Go. When you what? Another one, buddy. It's all the same passage. Wherefore, my brethren, when you do what? So communion, the best definition of communion in the scripture, in my opinion, is come together. Say it with me. The best description of, commun of communion in the scripture is what? Come together. One more time. Come together. That's what we're doing in a little bit. We're going to come together. We're going to come together around three crosses. Why are there three crosses out there? Because Jesus died with how many thieves on each side? One on each side. Can you do the math? How many? Three. Why do I stand in front of the one in the middle? Because Jesus was in the what? In the middle. Now, you don't have to do that when you do communion, but we have three crosses, and I love doing it that way. Amen. I want to just be as clear as crystal as we can around here. Amen. Communion is coming together, and it's coming together out there around those crosses, and that middle cross is Jesus. Amen? That's what we're doing. So what we have here in common is Jesus Christ. Now, I'm glad you come to fellowship, but we don't worship Fellowship Church. I'm glad you come and hear me, but we don't worship Gary Clark. You worship Gary Clark, you'll go to hell. Because that's where worshiping me will take you. Did you hear me, yes or no? But guess what? I ain't going to worship you because that's where you're going to take me. There's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. His name is who? Jesus. I know that seems narrow-minded. It is narrow-minded. When the light is green, you go. When the light is red, you stop. That's narrow-minded. Listen, there's no other way you can get saved except Jesus. Did you hear me? Why do people make up other ways? Well, why do people run red lights? I have no idea. Did y'all hear me, yes or no? That's not my problem. My problem is get it right, Gary. Get it right. And I, that's your problem. Communion is about Jesus Christ. We need to get this right. Y'all hear me or not? It ain't about the church. The Catholic church, here's what the Catholic church says. The Catholic church says if you divorced, you can't have communion. Do you know that? Yeah. How many knew that's what they said? Okay. How many have experienced that personally? You've experienced it personally. I know a few of you have. Last time I checked, the church ain't in charge of this. This is about Jesus, guys. Yes or no? I don't have to, I, I don't have to do this, that, or the other to, to, for you to get to have communion. You've got to be the one to do. You've got to be the one that says you're a Christian. You've got to be the one that says, I believe in Jesus Christ. I can't do that for you. Did you hear me or not? So, this is important stuff. We're fixing to talk about it. I'm getting sideways before I ever start. Now, what we come together for at communion is who? What's his name? Jesus. Period. Period. This is a church thing we do, but this is a Jesus thing we're doing. This ain't a Gary thing I made up. You hear me or not? So, I, I would, can you believe me from Rockingham would have come up with the idea of communion? This is, this is right out of the Bible. That's why we do it, man. So why do we need to come together? Why do we need to come together on a Sunday morning and do this? Communion, okay? So I've got several points from this passage. I'd like to help us have a great communion today. Are y'all ready? Yes or no? Say, I want to have a great communion today. Well, here's how you're going to have it. Let's go to the Scriptures. Let's see what the Bible says on how you and I are supposed to have communion, how it teaches us to have communion, and what I'm supposed to do at communion, okay? So number one, say that with me, get what? You're doing pretty good, but we can do better. Please help me again, get what? Son, you're not even talking to me. You're worried about holding her hand. 
All right, let's get it now. Quit it. This boy has got personality. I'm telling you right there. That's funny right there. But listen, we need to get focused. The number one thing we're saying this morning from the scripture is get focused. At communion, we need to take that time to get focused. The apostle Paul says, for I've received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was what? He took bread. And when he, we just read this. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, take, eat, this is my what? Body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he what? How long is Fellowship Church going to do communion? We're going to do it till Jesus comes back. Did you get that? And Gary's going to do it until Gary dies. Do you understand that? I'm going to keep taking communion, Lord willing, until I go and see Jesus face to face. Okay? This is what the Bible teaches. So we need to get focused. The first thing is this. Do this in remembrance of who? Jesus. This isn't about a church. This is about Jesus Christ. Now, the church, we do it. We lead it, okay? I'm here. I'm the pastor. I'm going to go out there and help you with communion a little bit, okay? But this isn't about me. This is in remembrance. It's cutting up because I keep hitting the button. It's not your fault back there. I'm going to lead communion, but I'm taking communion just like you're taking communion. I'm no better than you. I need salvation just like you need salvation. Amen? Yes or no? Amen. So get focused. We come together and we remember what Jesus did for us on the what? And I think that's why I love those visuals. As we're taking communion, we're looking at those crosses. That's what communion's about. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? When we have communion, it's all about Him. And you might say, Gary, I knew this, you're killing me. Well, some people don't know this. We need to nail this down. The bread reminds us of Jesus' what? Physical body. He actually was born. He had flesh. And when we take that bread, it reminds us of His physical body. And this is some thoughts that should be going through our mind when we take communion. They spit in his face as we hold that bread. Now, is that bread the actual body of Jesus? No. The Catholic Church teaches, and I'm not trying to pick on them today, I'm just telling you the truth. They believe that this actually is the real body of Jesus. It somehow supernaturally becomes the body of Jesus when you take this bread. It's not the real body of Jesus. It's bread and the juice is, one, is grape juice from Publix, okay? But, 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 the Catholics, are, the Catholics are right. They are right. So much of the church has made, we've just sort of minimized communion. And I appreciate how the Catholics have made communion so important. I do appreciate that, okay? But I don't appreciate their view of transubstantiation, okay? But I've learned something from them. I've learned something from them. And that is, Gary Clark, tech communion should be really, 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 really special. Yes or no? Amen. And you know what I do? You know how that's helped me in my life? When I take that bread now, I know that's just bread. But you know, for me, for me, spiritually, I want to look at that with focus. And I want to think of Jesus' body when I take that. Did you hear me? And that, that, that's helped me in my life. And I want you to have that kind of focus. And when you look at it, think about how they spit in his face. Think about how they buffeted him and others smote him with the palms of their hands. Think about it. Get focused, man. How that they released Barabbas and they scourged Jesus instead of this criminal. You remember? How the soldiers took Jesus in the common hall and they gathered him among the whole band of the soldiers. How they stripped him. When you look at that bread, do you see Jesus naked? I can't do that. Why not? That's who he is. That's what he did for you and for me. Are y'all hearing me today? They stripped him. They put on a scarlet robe. They, they, do you see when you take communion, the crown of thorns, they put in his head. Are you hearing me today? Communion's important, isn't it, church? Get focused. 
They put a reed in his right hand. They bowed the knee before him. They mocked Jesus, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him. They smote him on his head. They mocked him. They took his robe off of him. They put other raiment on him. They're playing with the body of Jesus, who we worship. Amen? Get focused. I know this is heavy, but I want it to be heavy. We must never forget the physical suffering that Jesus endured on our behalf. A lot of the church today, we just come to church. Oh, I'm going to church. You know why we come to church? Because Jesus died for us. He suffered for me. That's why I get to come here. That's why I'm saved. Amen. Say. It's in the Rotary Club. Y'all hear me or not? Say. This is the church of the living God. We need to get focused like that. The juice reminds us of Jesus shed blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no what? No remission. But Jesus bearing his cross, he went into a place, the place of a skull, which is called Golgotha. They crucified him with what? Say it with me, with what? Two others with him, one on either side, right from the Bible. See it? And this Jesus, knowing that all things are now accomplished, the scripture being fulfilled, he says, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar. They put it upon hyssop and put it in his mouth. And when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, say it with me, it is. And he bowed his head, he gave up the ghost. Communion's important. Focus, guys. Are y'all hearing me? I can't give this message every time we have communion. But we're doing it today. Try to get it inside of us. Then came the soldiers, and they broke the legs of the first and the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw he was what? Dead already. They didn't break his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear came along and did what to Jesus? He did what? I saw that in the clip on the movie a little bit ago. And forthwith came out blood and water. And he that saw it, John writing, says, this is true. What I'm telling you is true. And I know what I'm saying is true, that you might what? What I'm telling you is true, John says. I was there. This happened. We need to focus like this. We must never forget the worth of Jesus' priceless blood that was shed for us. Communion just shouldn't be something, guys. We just do. It has become that to a lot of denominations. Got to go do communion. Whew, God help us. Amen. There's some pretty damning verses about communion. If you screw around with it. Excuse me. You'll see them in just a bit. And almost all things are by the law purged with what? Blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no what? I just quoted it. Remission. Without Jesus' blood being shed, you can't be saved. If you ain't saved, you're going to hell. If I'm going to hell, I'm going to burn forever. If I'm going to burn forever, that ain't good. I should really focus at communion. Amen? That communion doesn't save us. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, saves us. But what we're celebrating is what saves people. Yes or no? This is really important, guys. Focusing on the selfless death of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and our Savior ought to be enough to rebuke the selfishness and senselessness that permeates so much of the church today. Who wrote that? I did. The church is crazy today. Give money, buy this, get your miracle, run around the house, act like a crazy fool. This should be our focus. Did you hear me, yes or no? Some crazy preacher putting on a show ain't going to help me with my sin. Amen. But this message right here will rebuke Gary Clark. It will help me get right with God. Communion, very important. So we need to get focused. That was point number one. That's the longest point. So if you think there's a bunch of them that long, that's the longest one. Number two, get what? Where did I get these from? Right from the passage in 1 Corinthians, it said that we're to get focused. Number two, look at this one. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily or in an unworthy manner shall be what? Guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man do what? Examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily, or in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks damnation. Did you see that right there? Say, like, did you know you can take communion and do it in an unworthy manner, not being focused? Let me give you an example. 
If you go out there and take communion and you think you're good enough to go to heaven without Jesus Christ, you're eating damnation to yourself. Did you hear me, yes or no? Can you imagine Jesus seated at the right hand of God the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession, looking on us having communion, and yet there's going to be some of us out there that believes I'm going to go to heaven because of my own good looks, my own good works, my church attendance? That's taking communion in an unworthy manner. Did you hear me, yes or no? Here's how you take communion. We take communion because we believe in you, Jesus. We believe you died on the cross. We believe you rose from the dead. That is taking communion in a worthy manner. Did you get that? Yes or no? So be careful. This is very important. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are what? They're weak and what? Sick. And many have what? That don't mean they're sleeping. That means they're deader than a hammer. That word and many sleep is the word have died. Only heaven knows how many people died an early death because they played around with communion. Did you hear me? That sounds like spooky preaching today, don't it? Preaching them went spooky on us. That's what the Bible said. Did the Bible say it? I've tried to think through in my life what is an unworthy manner to take communion. And the only thing I can really come up with is if you take communion and somehow you're taking communion and you're not giving credit to the Lord for his death on the cross and his, his resurrection, if somehow you're doing it in such a way to where you think you're good enough and you're just doing this because it's the thing to do, I want to warn you with a strong warning, don't do that. Did you hear me? But don't make something up. Deal with the Lord. If you're not a Christian, become a Christian. Did you hear me? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be what? Saved. There's no reason to keep living that way. Look now, if we're judged, if we judge ourselves, we should not be what? Listen, I'm not to stand in judgment over you and you're not standing in judgment over me. We're supposed to judge ourselves. But when we are judged, we're what? Chastened to the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So we need to get right. Communion helps me get right. Say that with me. Communion helps me do what? Get That's why we do it every month. Do y'all hear them crickets? It's driving me straight up the wall. I'm trying my best, but crickets put me to sleep. I think I'm sitting by a river right now. You know what I'm saying? So pray that I'll get through this message. Here we go. Now listen, communion, when we come together, say this with me, it's not a what? Thank you. But when we have communion, you know, I don't come to communion looking at you. I'm supposed to come communion at, to communion looking at me. You understand that? I'm supposed to be getting right with God. I ain't supposed to be worried about you getting right with God. That's communion. So get right. Communion's a huddle. That's what we do out there. We're going to huddle. We're going to huddle in front of those crosses. Now, a lot of churches, you sit down and do it. Now, that's okay if they do it that way. I like us to get up and go out and be in a huddle. And I ask you, what are you putting into communion today? What are you putting into it? Are you putting focus? Are you, are you caring about it? Think about it. What effort are you making today? As we gather as a body of believers today, what effort are you making? Now, I'm not asking, are you giving money? I'm, not asking, I'm just asking, are you dealing with your sin? Are you dealing with your life today? Are you working on your focus today? This is, we're a team here to put this together. Amen. What are you bringing to the table today? Yes or no? Amen. Say, get focused. Get what? Get right with God today. Keep looking. We're going to get, examine yourself, not somebody else's what? That's my statement right there. That's a country talk. Examine yourself and not somebody else's. We need to get right with God. Amen. Prepare yourself to give Jesus Christ the worship that he won. That's communion. I know this is long. I don't do this every time, but this is a special time. I wanted to make sure we nailed this today. So get right. Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah, what did he say? Woe is what? He didn't say woe is you. He said woe is me. 
And then later on, he said, here am I, send who? Me. Communion gives us a chance to get right with God. And we got that chance all the time, but communion's special. And we ought to use that opportunity. So communion means coming together where we get focused. It means coming together where we get what? Right? These other three points, they're a lot less. Get real. Get real. Say that with me. Get real. We shouldn't take communion as phony baloney. We need to get real. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry for one another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. It's crazy verses here. That you come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Communion, coming together, is about love. This is about love. What we're about to do is about love. It's about Jesus loving us, but it's also about us loving each other. Y'all hear me or not? Communion is about love and fellowship with Jesus and believers. This is a real thing. We need to put into that. We need to say that. We need to believe that. It's not about the, the food and the drink. You understand? Listen, you ain't going to get full on what we're going to give you today. That's not what it's about. It's about remembering Jesus, but it's all about us loving one another. Communion, coming together. It helps us on a regular basis. Say this with me. To put Jesus and others before our own and our own that's why we have communion. At my former church, we did it once a quarter. I didn't like that. We do it once a month. You might say, why don't we do it every week? You wouldn't be wrong to say that. I sort of like it once a month because it gives it the priority I like it to have. I, did, I, I just don't do it every time. I'm, I'm afraid it might be old hat. I don't want it to be that. But I like it once a month, and I don't want it at the end of the month. I want it at the first of the month on the first Sunday to set our month off on the path it needs to go. Do y'all understand our thinking? Yes or no? So realize, listen, get real. You can eat anywhere, but you just can't do this anywhere, guys. This is us coming together as, as the body of believers. This is a real event that really matters to the Lord. Amen? We're not to be centered on the food. The Bible actually says if you're centered on, on food and stuff like that at communion, stay at home because they would also have a big meal. The early church would have a big meal and, and they would miss the main event, and that was communion. Communion, coming together. So keep it real, man. Number four, say that with me. Get what? Can y'all help me one more time? Get what? So we've seen several points. I need to get focused at communion. I need to get right with God at communion. I need to get real at communion. And I need to get along at communion. So many churches are full of divisions. Yet when communion comes, they act like little saints. It's hilarious. We're supposed to get along as believers. Did y'all hear me yes or no? Now, I'm blessed here. We get along here. That don't mean that sometimes I can't get ill. All right? I get ill sometimes. You probably get ill sometimes. But the bottom line is, that ain't right. We're supposed to get along as believers of Christ. Yes or no? Amen. Say and that's who we are at fellowship. We get along. If you like to not get along, you ain't going to fit in here. Did you hear me? If you want to be a pain in the rear end, you're not going to get along too good here. We want people to come. It's okay. We want you to be honest. But the bottom line is we want the Lord to help us to get along. Amen. Say. Communion is about that. Here's what Paul said. He's talking about communion. Watch it. It's been declared of, of me, brethren, by them that are the house of clothes, that there's contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you, you're saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. There were so many factions, and they were fussing. Paul says, listen, listen, first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there's what? Say it with me, I hear there's what? Divisions among you. Can you imagine having communion and you've got all with a brother? Yes or no? Are you telling me that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, can't can't fix that? Yes or no? Amen. What are we doing? That's what Paul says. I hear there's divisions among you. We're to get along. Communion is us coming together. It's a, it's a rebuke. It's a rebuke. Communion is a rebuke of our relationships when they're not right with God. Are y'all hearing me today? No divisions. Say that with me. Start at the top. No divisions. No. No because if you do these, there's no what? And then there's no what? You can't just have communion 
and rubber stamp your bad attitude. Or me, I can't do, I'll go have communion now and I can hate my brother. You a moron. Excuse me. Amen. How many have ever had to apologize to somebody? Let me see some hands. So you've already got practice. Amen. Listen, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's a good thing for me to get right with my brother. That's awesome. Communion helps me do that. Amen. Get right, man, and get along with others. Divisiveness, resentment, my writing, stinking attitudes toward each other makes communion what? What did God say in his word in the book of Revelation? The, the church at Laodicea. He said, I will do what to you? I'll do what? I'll spew you out of my mouth. I think that's how, much, how Jesus must feel when we have communion. And we have all with our brother or sister. He must be, you know how you are as a, as a parent and, and your children aren't getting along? It makes you sick, don't it? Yes or no? No good parent would want that out of their children where they're hating on one another. Can you imagine God Almighty seeing people like this, hating on one another, but they're taking communion? You know what I see? I see a picture of him just throwing up. Did you hear me? This is a tough message, isn't it? Are y'all doing all right, though? Okay, just right out of the Bible. Last one, number five, get what? That's what I like. Let's review. Get focused, get right, get real, get along. This is all taught at communion. And the last one is get fellowshipping. Get fellowshipping. The early church, they did this often. And they, they used communion as a great time of fellowship. When you come together, therefore, into one place, listen, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone takes before his own supper, and one's hungry and another's drunk. Paul had a real hard time with his church. I, I don't have all day to go into this, but if you study the book of 1 Corinthians, this was a crazy lunatic church. And Paul had to set it straight. He had started the church, but it had really run off the rails. And so he's having to teach them step by step how to do the things the right way. And... Uh, you know, so they were having meals, people were getting drunk, they're having communion. I mean, people are taking the food from one another. It was just a nightmare. They're hating on each other. It was a disaster. Paul says, what? Don't you have houses to eat and drink in? You despise you, the church of God, so much? You shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for the way you're living? I ain't going to praise you. You crazy people. That's basically what he's saying. Okay, keep looking. But don't you see how the early church in Acts did communion, how they lived? This should be us, guys, fellowshipping. Look at it. I'm done. And all that believed together, here's our word, had things what? That's what we have at fellowship. You come from different places in the country. Guess who else comes from? I came from North Carolina. Now, my kids were born here, but most all of us have in common that we came from somewhere else. Yes or no? But you know the real thing we have in common, we've already discussed it, is that we're all sinners. We have that in common, don't we? But our goal is that all of us have received Jesus Christ. We have that in common, yes or no, amen. There's no place for me to, well, your house is better than mine, or I make more money than you, or you make more money than me. The, the early church had none of that foolishness. Nobody one-upped anybody. You understand? Communion communion helps us not to do that yes or no amen I know this is a deep message but I really want it I think it's important for us in the early church communion was often preceded by what was called a love feast you know why we have donuts on Sunday morning guess why so you can love on one another we've been criticized for having refreshments well if you don't like refreshments find somewhere else to go we're gonna keep having refreshments here I like it when people can have a cup of coffee and talk to one another. You hear me or not? Say, so, where do you get that model from, Clark, from the, from the Bible? They had house churches. Well, guess what? We have Bible studies in people's homes, but this is a bigger church. I get that. But, you know, we can fellowship out there. Yes or no? Amen. We're going to have a movie tonight. Guess what we're going to have after the movie? Take a wild guess. Pizza! Listen, I never said I was a dietitian, okay? But the bottom line is we believe in fellowshipping. Y'all hear me or not today? 
We believe in that. We want that. Do you hear me? If communion is anything, it's, it's we're a community together. We believe in Jesus, but we can break bread together. We can eat together. You hear me? I've gone all over the place today. People would fellowship together in the unity of the Holy Spirit. That's what we have here. We have fellowship in the unity of the Holy Spirit. You know, my background was Hellraiser, then it was Baptist, and I got to quit. But we chose to have a non-denominational church here. And I'm so glad we made that choice. It hasn't been an easy choice. It would have been easier for me just to fellowship with people who were just like me. It's harder to fellowship with people who ain't just like you, who have another opinion, who came from a different background. But did you know what I've learned? Did you hear me to say today I've learned from Catholics? Did you hear me say that? You would have never, ever heard me say such a thing. I could tell you everything wrong with them. But God has taught me. There's some things right with them, Gary. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Amen. There's some different things. But the bottom line is Jesus Christ. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Do you believe he died on the cross and he rose from the dead? Who gives a hoot how long your hair is? Amen. Say. Or if you're wearing a dress. Y'all hear me or not? Say. Get fellowshipping. Unity. That's what it means. We're not to be selfish, guys. It teaches us that. We're to be brothers and sisters in Christ. We're to be sharing with one another. We're to be submitting to one another. This is what communion teaches. We're to be serving one another. This is communion to me. And I got to quit. This is how we come together. Am I done, Raj? Close? Say it with me. Here we go. Number one, get what? Number two, get. Number three, get. Number four, get up. And number five, get what? Let's thank the Lord for the word. I am wore out. That was a hard message. Amen. John, that was a hard message. I'm going to tell you right now. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda, West Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.